Ken Delmar, welcoming you to the Alan Young Show, featuring our singing star, B. Wayne, the music of Peter Van Steeden, and starring Alan Young. Thank you, Ken. Good evening, friends. Say, Kenny, uh, where do you think I went last night? Huh? huh? The store club. The store club? Uh, How did you happen to go there? Well, last night the lady next door had a baby, so I ran out of my apartment, hopped in a cab, and I said, follow the stork. It, uh, and the stork led you right to the front door of the store club. No, not the front door. He had to use the delivery entrance. <laughs> That's the first time I'd ever been to that place. Well, how do you know it was the store club? All the waiters were standing around on one foot. <laughs> well, Kenny, no sooner did I check my hat and the head waiter came up to me and said, Good evening, I have a table for you, Mr. Webster. Webster? What made him think your name was Webster? I was carrying a dictionary under my arm. <laughs> well, why did you bring a dictionary to the store club? I hate to eat alone. Kenny, I've, uh, I've never been to such a swanky place. The hat check girl looked like Marlene Dietrich, the flower girl looked like Betty Grable, and the cigarette girl. What did she look like? An ashtray. <laughs> well, Kenny, I finally got a table, and I sat down, ordered myself some guinea hen under glass. Oh, boy, how was it, Alan? The guinea hen was swell, but the glass was very tough. Alan, you really didn't eat the glass. I certainly did. <laughs> Of course, you'll never guess what I had for dessert. What? Some pie, Rex. But then... <laughs> oh, we should have saved that gag. <laughs> Indefinitely. But then, Kenny, the most uh, wonderful thing happened. I'd finished my meal, and I happened to look up, and there, across the room, sat Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar? Yeah, and she must have known who I was, because she sent the waiter over to ask me for a dance. She did? Yeah. And he was a pretty good dancer for a waiter, too. <laughs> well, Alan, it, it's not like you to go to a nightclub. You must have had some reason. Well, I, I did, Kenny. I, I was lonely. See, I, I missed my girl. Alan, I didn't know you had a girl. Why not? My mother had a boy. <laughs> oh, I mean, sure, sure, I have a girl, sure. <laughs> Last week, I went back to my hometown of Milldale. I ran into my old sweetheart, Mary Ann. Gee, we, we sat on the swing on the front porch. Well? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, the love bug has bitten Alan Yard. He has? Get to my... Oh, oh. Yes, yes, he has, Ken. Mary Ann and her mother are coming here to pay me a visit tonight, and well, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a build-up, eh? Okay, Alan. Yeah. yeah Ooh, uh, that must be them now. Yeah. Don't forget, Kenny. Make me seem important. Yeah, leave it to me, Alan. Yeah, okay. Yes? Is uh, this the Alan Young clam bait? <laughs> yes, it is. Well, I want to see Mr. Young. Madam, nobody can see Alan Young without a ticket. Ticket? Who does he think he is, Eddie Cantor? <laughs> now look here, greasy boy. I want to see Alan Young, and I... Lady, I'm sorry. You can't come in without a ticket. Now, go away before I slug you. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, Jim. You're overdoing it. Come in, Mrs. Grimes. Hello, Mary Ann. Hello, Alan. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Grimes. Kenny didn't know who you were. No, he didn't. I'll bet you put him up to it, you no good, stupid, fat-headed, naive, loud-mouthed bum. <laughs> naive? <laughs> Grimes, you're talking to a man who's seen life from the balcony of a burlesque show. You call me naive. Oh, Alan. Hello, Mary Ann. You glad to see me? Oh, yes. Uh, notice anything different about me, Mary Ann? No. Take a good look. No, I don't see anything different about you. Wearing my cufflinks backwards. <laughs> now, look here, floppy sock. <laughs> you got me to bring Mary Ann down here, and what for? Well, Mrs. Grimes, since Mary Ann and I are about to settle down to connubial bliss, if you'll pardon the expression, I uh, thought you ought to know what I do for a living. Well, what do you do for a living? I'm a comedian. A comedian. <laughs> That's the laugh. Hmm. If it is, it's the best one I got tonight. <laughs> well, being a radio... Well, being a radio comedian isn't my idea of honest work. Any man who marries my daughter must have a steady, sensible job. But you don't understand, Mrs. Grimes. Or may I call you Gravel Gertie? 
Uh, I'm, I'm doing fine. Why, there's, there's no telling where I can go with my career. There is telling, but I'm a lady. <laughs> now, remember, until you get yourself a decent, respectable job, you can't marry my daughter. Come along, Mary Ann. You go on ahead, Mother. I'll be right with you. I just want to say a word to Alice. All right. So long, pelican puss. Gee, Mary Ann, your mother's such a manly little fellow, isn't she? <laughs> But I'm, I'm glad you stayed here to talk to me. This is the first chance we've had to be alone. Yes. Yeah. Been looking forward to this all evening. Me too. Mm. Marianne, you like to hold hands? Oh, I'd love to. Do you mind if I gave you a little hug? I wish you would. How about a kiss? Okay. Gee, I hate a girl who plays hard to get. <laughs> Tell me, Marianne, do you feel the same way as your mother does about me? No. I think you're human. Hmm. Well, what I mean is, how do you feel about uh, about marrying a radio comedian? Well, Alan, I had hopes of marrying a man who does more exciting work. Like a newspaper man, for instance. What's exciting about delivering newspapers? <laughs> I mean a newspaper reporter. Oh, I see a reporter. Gosh, that's an idea. I can just see myself now dashing into the White House. How do you do, Mr. President? I'm Alan Young of the Gazette. I want a statement from you on the... Well guarded, isn't he? <laughs> Marianne, if I become a newspaper reporter, will you marry me? Yes, I will. Gee. The next time you see me, I'll be working for a newspaper. You'll hear me yelling, Stop the presses! Stop the presses! Why? I got my pants caught in the wheel. <laughs> and now, Marianne, I, I bid you farewell. Or as we newspaper men say, quote, unquote. <laughs> Don't worry, Marianne. I'll get myself a job as a newspaper reporter. See you later. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our glamorous singing star, B. Wayne, will revive for you that swell old tune, Music Makes Me. I like music, old or new, but music makes me do the things I never should do. I like music, green or blue, but music makes me do things that I never should do. My self-control was something to brag about, now it's a gag about town. The things I do, I never forgive them for just when I'm living them down. I hear music, then I do. For music makes me do the things I never should do. It makes me lose my dignity. It makes me lose my poor. But my folks call it noise. I like music, old or new. But music makes me do the things I never should do. Oh, I like music, sweet or blue. But music makes me do things that I never should do.
here's where I try to get myself a job as a newspaper reporter. And I think I've picked the best paper in town. The New York Daily Blade. The only paper you can shave with. <laughs> well, here's the editor's office. Now I've got to approach him for a job. I think I'll be breezy. Breezy like the reporters in the movies. <clears throat> Come in. Well, what can I do for you? Quiet, chief. Meet the best little reporter in the business. Breezy young. Hot news, flash news. Right in there pitching all the time. That's me. Have a cigar. What's cooking? I'm a new star reporter. See? Fifty bucks a week and I'll breeze right to work. Is that a deal? <laughs> well, that breeze died down suddenly. But I'm not discouraged. I'll try again. Come in. Hiya, Chief. I'm back again. Who are you? Don't you remember? I'm the guy who went... <laughs> and no other sound effects man can make that statement. Now, Mr. Editor, I uh, came here to ask... Uh, just a moment. Hello? Who's this? Hogan? I sent Riley out to track down killer Scarpetti. What happened to him? Scarpetti bumped him off. Well, you get the story, Hogan. Now, what were you saying, young fellow? Mr. Editor, I came here to ask you... Uh, just a minute. Hello? Who's this? Schwartz? What happened to Hogan? Scarpetti got him, too? Stay on the story, Schwartz. Now, uh, what did you say you want? Mr. Editor, I came here to ask you if I could... uh, Just a second. Hello? Who's this? Scarpetti? What happened to Schwartz? You got him, too? Listen, Scarpetti, you've killed nine of my reporters already, but we won't give up. I'm sending another man down there right away. <laughs> Gee, do many of your reporters get bumped off by gangsters? Dozens of them every day. Hmm. Now, uh, you came in here to ask me something. Yes, yes, I did. Well, go ahead. Mr. Editor, do you think John's other wife is really happy? <laughs> oh, you can't fool me, my boy. You came in here to get a job as a reporter. Reporter? Who me? Who me? Yes, you did, and I'm going to assign you to the Scar Patty story. Oh, no, thanks. I'd much rather be a human interest reporter and interview pretty girls. Bah, pretty girls are a dime a dozen. Yeah? Here, I've been using my dimes to buy ice cream sodas. <laughs> well, when do I go to work? You start tomorrow. But remember, a newspaper man's life is dedicated to public service. Yes, sir, and I know that service pays off in the long run. I used to be a movie usher, and every day a little old man used to come in, and I'd help him find a seat take care of his umbrella and his overcoat. And after the show, I'd help him on his overcoat and give his umbrella and help him up the aisle. That went on every week for five years. And then one day, that, that little old man died. Let you all his money? Nah, he was just an old pet. <laughs> but uh, I'll get right to work, Mr. Editor. I'll be your best reporter. Of uh, course. Uh, of course, you have a portable typewriter. No, sir, but I know where I can get one. Where? Green Bracker's department store. <laughs> Mr. Breenbacker. Oh, Mr. Breenbacker. Oh, here I am. You would have to walk in now. Why? Were you doing something important? Yes, I was in the back of the store lacing up my wife's corset. <laughs> Must be something wrong with it. Why? No matter how tight I lace it, I still buzz in the front. <laughs> now, uh, what do you want? Mr. Breenbacker, I've got a new job. As a vacuum cleaner would say, Eureka. Guess, guess what kind of a job it is, Mr. Breenbacker. Does it fit your personality? Perfectly. You're a contact man for a cut-rate undertaker. No, oh, no. I got a job on a newspaper. What are you, tug of war editor for Yank? Of course not. I'm working on one of the big metropolitan papers. Il Progresso? <laughs> Il Progresso. Si. That's an Italian newspaper. What made you think of that? I always read Italian newspapers. Why? I've got a lot of money invested in spaghetti. Why did you invest your money in spaghetti? My uncle died and left me a hundred thousand meatballs, nosy. <laughs> now, did you come in here to buy something, or can I go back and finish touching up my hair? Certainly, I want to buy something. I want to buy a typewriter. Have you got a priority? No. The rest of this transaction will be conducted in a whisper. <laughs> I've got.
got one typewriter left. It'll cost you nine dollars. Only nine dollars? Yes. The letter L was missing. Well, how does it write? Owsy. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it, Mr. Beanbacker. Where is it? I need a typewriter for my work as a newspaper reporter. Oh, I hate reporters. Before my wife Emily married me, she used to go around with a very famous newspaper reporter. Should it serve the world? No. Really? From the start? No. Then who was he? Peeling from the sun. <laughs> Well, how did it happen that Mrs. Greenbracker married you instead of him? Well, she had to choose between him, the flashy, fast-moving guy, and me, the slow, steady plugger. The hare and the tortoise. And she chose you. Yes, yeah, she thought I looked cute with a shell on my back. <laughs> You've led an interesting life, Mr. Greenbracker. You don't know the half of it. I remember one time when I was 19 years Can I old. I need a typewriter now. Yeah, in a minute. I, I was 19 years old, as I recall it. And you I told me you had a typewriter. I know one. Anyway, I was 19 years old, and this blonde manicurist must have been at least 35. So Mr. I... Mr. Greenbacker, the typewriter, the typewriter. The typewriter, the typewriter. <laughs> Instead of worrying about a typewriter, a boy of your age should be out chasing girls. Well, I... <laughs> I've got my career to think about. Isn't he unappetizing? <laughs> Typewriter's right here on the table. Okay, I'll just sit down in this chair and try it out. Don't lean back. There's an electric fan right behind Don't you. Don't worry, Mr. Breenberg. Watch out for that fan. Please, Mr. Breenberg, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> Now, do you want the typewriter? Yes, sir. Here's your nine dollars. Boy, I got a bargain. Take another look at the typewriter. Hey, you cheated me. You said this typewriter was missing only one letter, or whatever it is. <laughs> now that I look at it, there are only two letters in the whole machine, B and O. What can I do with a typewriter with the letters B and O? Write fan mail for Life Boy Soap. Oh, good day, Mr. Good Green. day, Mr. Try to whisper a sweet 
fever clings in your ear. But somehow or other, nothing sounds quite so dear as this soft, caressing word I know. my portable typewriter, Mr. Editor. I'm all ready to go to work as a reporter. You got here just in time, Young. I've been called away on a very important assignment. I want you to take over as editor temporarily. Here, use my desk. Gee, thank you. Hmm, what a great big desk. Ten buttons and i got to hold up my pants with a Band-Aid. <laughs> I wonder what this first button's for. Oh, I'll just push it. Water cooler. What's this second one? Dixie cup. Well, I'll, I'll try this last one here. You rang for me, Chief? 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 <laughs> oh, yes. I did? I mean, I did. I did, yes, yes. Uh, I want to see you all, fellas. Uh, I just want to say, fellas, uh, this is a newspaper. And, uh, uh, well, I... I said about winds up, fellas. Come on, you're supposed to be the editor. What's on your mind? Well, it's very simple. I know, but what's on it? <laughs> look, if you don't think I can handle this job, just look into my eyes, buddy. Look deep into my eyes. Okay, I'm looking into your eyes. Blue, aren't they? <laughs> now, I want to tell you something, fellas. It's very important. It's about spies, see? In giving out news, you never know who's listening, so you've got to be careful what you say. Now, listen to me. I beg your pardon. Where's the news about convoys? Over on the desk. You guys listen to me, please. <laughs> listen and you learn how to protect vital information. How many are they shipping? 600. You never know how important, how important these things are, so be careful every minute. And uh, when are they being shipped out? 10 o'clock tonight. Now, don't... Uh... Uh, thank you, my dear. You're welcome. Now... Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. Hello. <laughs> Now, just follow me, fellas, and you won't go far wrong. Hey, Young, that guy who just left, didn't he look kind of suspicious? Well, how could you tell? He was wearing a mask. <laughs> now, men, fellas, go out and bring back some news. i got to make some changes around here. I'm not satisfied. I want to speak to my assistant editor here. Oh, stop! <laughs> stop! He's in conference. <laughs> uh, come in. Hello, Mr. Young. Well, if it isn't the man who writes our weather forecast. Say, how about chances for a shower? Go ahead and take one if you need it. <laughs> that guy's become unbearable since we put mercury in his thermometer. Well, how to get some news. Oh, Alan. Alan. Oh, what is it, Mary Ann? I've got an idea for your paper. Huh? My mother wants to write a column full of real homely philosophy. Well, she's got the face for it. Now, now Alan, let's leave my father, mother's face out of this tonight. Why tonight? Looks like we're left out too long last night. <laughs> you can stay after and write that line 500 times. <laughs> but that's not... That's not getting me any news. Hmm. Hello, Editor Young speaking. Mr. Young, and this is Japanese soldier speaking. Americans attack him, but I are not afraid. Banzai. What happened? Banzai. <laughs> oh, good. They shot him between Toe and Joe. Well, I still haven't got any news, and the paper goes to press in a few minutes. Uh, hello? Hey, Chief. A man down here has just been murdered. What about? I'm innocent, I tell you. Innocent. They can't pin a thing on me. 
Alan, you've got to make a go of this job for my sake. I know, Marianne. I'm, I'm doing my best, but nothing ever happens around here. Oh, come in. I beg your pardon. I'm the ambassador from Patagonia. Do you mind if I jump out of your window? Not at all. Thank you. I guess it's just because some days are quieter than others, that's all. Pardon me, I'm the district attorney. Do you mind if I shoot myself in here? Uh, not at all. Thank you. No. no. <laughs> this just happens to be one of those days, that's all. After all, you can't expect things to happen. Uh, excuse me, Anna Young. May I use your telephone? Certainly, go right ahead. Hello, Midwood Hospital. This is Mr. Beamish. How is my wife? What? Seven! Wow! Mr. Young, my wife has just had seven babies. This outdoes the quintuplets. What do you say about that? You owe me a nickel for that call. <laughs> you don't understand, Mr. Young. My wife has just had seven babies at the Midwood Hospital. Midwood Hospital? Yes! That's a ten cent call. <laughs> Young, what way is this to run a newspaper? Well, what's the matter, Mr. Ed? Didn't I do a good job? Certainly not. Look at the headlines the other papers in this town have. And look at the headline you put on our paper. John Schultz is a nice man. Who is John Schultz? He's my butcher. He promised me a pound of steak if I put his name in the paper. Young, you're fired. Do you hear me? Fire. Been on the swing ship all night, turning out my quota. All right, now I'm beat right down to the side, and I've got to take myself some not so milkman. Keep those bottles quiet. All oh, the noise of the river, I don't mind it, but the guy with the whiskers has a lot behind it, but I can't keep punching with that. Victory crew, when you're making me punchy with that bottle blue. I wanna give my all if I'm gonna give it, but I gotta get the shot. I if I'm gonna rivet, so we'll bail out. But without a milk barrage, cause it's unpatriotic, it's a sabotage. Buy it. Milkman, milkman, keep those bottles quiet. I've been jumping on the swing shift all night, turning out my quota. Tonight, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. You're you're not mad at me because I got fired from that newspaper job. No, I'm not mad at you. Yeah. I mean as much to you as I ever did? Of course. Good. Well, I guess I have the right to ask you a question. Of course, Alan. What is it? Uh Mary Ann. I'm listening, Alan. I hope you'll say yes. What's the question, Alan? Mary Ann, would you like to buy a used portable typewriter? <laughs> Peter, myself, in fact, all of us, we want to thank you for being with us tonight. <laughs> 